Hello, you're watching Dansky, and in this video, we're going to bring a game menu UI to life with some music, sound, and visual effects, all in Premiere Pro. And this is the last video in the mini series that is in partnership with MSI, where I'll be using the Creator 17 laptop throughout the tutorial. And here's a quick rundown on the specs. It's powered by a 10th gen i7 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of SSD storage, and an RTX 2080 Super GPU. The screen is very big and very bright thanks to the mini LED technology with 100% Adobe RGB color accuracy. So that's the Creator 17 and you can find out more information with the link in the description. And without further ado, let's get started. Rightio, so we're now in Premiere Pro and if I double click in the project panel, I can navigate to my assets folder. I've got some sound effects, a music track and a few visual effects and I'm gonna import these all into Premiere Pro. And I'm just gonna expand this down and take a minute just to drag these assets around, reorganize them, delete any empty folders. And if I go into the effects here, you can see if I double click the thumbnail, these are some of the video effects that I've got. And I'm just going to play a couple of the sound effects. And here is the soundtrack. Okay, so those are some of the sounds. Next, I'm going to open up the screen capture of the game menu UI that I designed in Adobe XD. I'll link this on a card if you haven't seen it. And I'm just gonna mark the in and out points here and then click this icon and drag this onto the timeline. And we'll just play through this to check it works. That's always a good start. And I'll just click this, go up to effect controls and just scale this up a little bit just so it fills the screen. And next I'm gonna open up one of my effects. We have some smoke here against a black background, very cool. Again, I'm going to define the in and out points for this clip, essentially the start and the end. And then click this icon and drag this onto the timeline. Now, of course, if I scrub through this, you can't see anything. So let's go up to effect controls, down to blend mode, and we can change this to screen or lighten. There's a few other ones in there as well. And this enables us to render the darkest parts of our image as transparent, leaving just the smoke effect. And we can adjust the opacity as well to make that more or less pronounced and adjust other properties like size, rotation, position. And you can see me doing this here. Next, I'm going to navigate up to the effects panel and type feather. And then I'm gonna drag this onto the clip. And then from the effect controls panel, I'm going to increase the feather. This is going to soften the edges so we don't have that hard edge to our smoke. And I can just scrub through this now to check how it looks at different points on the timeline. And you can see me just making some adjustments here just to make sure everything looks good at every different point. Okay, all looks good to me. What I'm going to do next is select another clip. This is of some fire with some cinders floating upwards and I'm gonna drag this onto the timeline. I'm just gonna bring the size down a little bit and with the clip selected, go to effect controls and again, change that blending mode to something like lighten or screen. And you can see that we're starting to layer up the fire with the cinders with the smoke. So now I can go back up to the effects panel and I'm going to type in flip and we're gonna drag this horizontal flip onto the clip so that the fire in the cinders is going the other way and matches the smoke. And I'm just gonna take a moment to make a few adjustments to this. And then I'm going to go back to the effects panel and I'm gonna search for feather. I'm gonna drag this on and do the same thing again. Just soften any of those hard edges so that it blends the fire into the background. Okay, so there's one more clip I've got. This is of some mist, some fog. You can see it's slowly moving. And what I'm gonna do is just move these two up first and then drag this one underneath. And then with this selected, go to effect controls and again, change the blending mode and then bring that opacity down just so it's not so prominent. And this clip isn't actually as long, so I'm going to hold Alt or Option and drag to duplicate this, and just duplicate this a few times, and then bring this in. And then I'm just gonna right click where the two clips join, and then just use a cross dissolve just to blend these together. It's very subtle, so we can definitely get away with this here. And we'll just play this to check it all looks good. There we go. It's going to be very difficult <laughs> to notice that transition there. 
Now I'm just going to adjust the length of a few other clips and apply some default transitions to either end so they fade in and fade out. And we'll just scrub back to the beginning and give this a playthrough. So everything looks good, but we can see some of these effects are a bit fast. So if we right click on one of the clips and select speed and duration, we can bring this down. However, because we're making this clip slower than its native frame rate, this is what's going to happen. So if we play this now, you can see it looks very, very choppy, definitely not smooth. So I'm just gonna make these shorter. And something we can do is right click this, go back into the menu and change the time interpolation to optical flow. So we'll do these for all of the clips that we've slowed down. And if we play again, it looks exactly the same because we need to render this. So go to sequence down to render in out and let Premiere Pro do its thing. And I'm just gonna speed up this part of the screen capture, but trust me when I say that powerful hardware is going to shortcut this part of the process massively. So let's go back and play this again. Now it's rendered and you can see we have our smoke playing at 25% speed, nice and smooth. There we go, nifty little trick. Okay, so now I'm going to select the transition up here and adjust the timing so this blends in over a longer duration. And you can see this area on the timeline is now yellow and will need to be re-rendered. And I'm just gonna take a minute to fine tune my animation and re-render everything. So at the moment, I'm just scrubbing backwards and forwards, checking every frame in the video just to check everything looks good. Now it's time to add some sound. So I'm gonna to go to my sound effects panel and you can see how that sounds. And then I can drag this onto the timeline. And I'm gonna try and line up the sound effects with the actions taken in the menu. Okay, so that's the first one. Next, I'm gonna scrub forward and find the next piece of movement in the video. And then I'm going to hold Alter Option and duplicate this by dragging. And this is going to be the beep boop sound that plays when the user navigates through the menu. Okay, so there's a few of those in. I've got another sound effect here. And I can drag this onto the timeline. This is going to be used to enter the character selection screen. There we go, nice. And again, I'm just gonna take a moment to populate the rest of the timeline with all of these different sound effects. Looking good. So the last thing we're gonna do is add the soundtrack. So we'll drag this onto the timeline. And I can just play this through. Now there's a part in this soundtrack where it really kicks in, a nice little drop. So that's what I'm gonna try and find here. There we go, that's the drop. So now I'm gonna use the razor tool to make a cut at that point. And I want to move this cut so that that audio drop lines up with the first action taken in the video. So I'm just gonna shuffle a few things around now and make sure that this all lines up correctly. Okay, let's give it a listen. There we go. And one more thing I'm just going to add for dramatic effect are some sound effects. So we have a siren and we have a chap screaming. So I'm just gonna make these a little bit quieter because I want these to be background noises. So it's just a case of right clicking the clip, selecting audio gain and adding a negative value. Again, I'm just going to take a moment to add some transitions, tidy these clips up. And there we go, we have our background noises. Now it's just a case of shortening the track and applying a default transition and then increasing the length of that transition so that the audio track fades out at the end. Lovely. Now we can go back to the beginning, give it a render one more time and play the final result.
And there we go, that's how to bring your game menu UI designs to life with some audio and visual effects in Premiere Pro. So thanks to MSI for sponsoring this mini series and to you for watching. Remember to like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Take care and I'll see you next time.